the seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 32. Alternative ways to machine the water gauge protector supports, starting by using the self-centering four jaw chuck fitted to my smart and brown lathe. The brass blocks that I am using for this job are far too big, but they are useful for a tutorial. It allows me to use different machining operations to make the water gauge protectors. I could have cut the shapes out of some quarter inch brass sheet, but at the time when I started to make these parts I didn't have any brass bar of the right thickness, hence the need for more machining than necessary. The next part of the job is to reduce the thickness of these brass blocks. First of all, using a needle file, I'm scribing a line on the inside of the hole. And even if I machine down to this line, they're still going to be too thick. I'm demonstrating this by using a 6BA bolt, which only just goes through this thickness. They would look very clumsy and stupid if I left them like this. Originally, I made these blocks using my milling machine. For the next operation, I'm going to show you this. It's a four-jaw self-centering chuck. I put a ruler behind the block to make sure it fits in there squarely, and I'm pressing it into position against the ruler with the tailstock. This method works, but for the thickness that I finally need to reduce these down to, it's going to be a bit risky. At this stage, the part has been held very securely in the chuck, but if I wanted to make it any thinner, there wouldn't be much metal being held by the chuck, and the part would probably work loose in the chuck and be destroyed. It's okay for the moment, and I'm only taking light cuts, and there's about half of the thickness of the brass being supported by the chuck. Because the brass block is so firmly held in place, I can actually take quite deep cuts. This is not such a deep cut, I just wanted to show a close-up of the cutting operation. I'm using the power feed on the cross slide to do this, and at the moment the tool is running quite fast relative to the speed of the work, hence the rings that you can see on the metal. This morning I spoke on the phone to the owner of the engine to explain that the workshop clock is not on for this job, because I would not normally make parts like this as I'm showing here. As I mentioned earlier, this is because it's a tutorial. In this clip I'm using a wider steel rule to push the block further forward, but now it's not really held very well in the chuck jaws. I do not want to have to start the job again, so I'm being very careful this time, taking a much shallower cut. You will notice that the hole in the middle of the block isn't perfectly centralised. This is because the block is not perfectly square. All four of the blocks were the same size when I checked them using my digital caliper, but since then I've cleaned them up on the belt sander, so now they are not perfectly square. But it really doesn't matter for this job, and in any case, this is the end of the lathe work part of this video. Apart from risking damaging the part, it takes too long. And for that reason, it's back to the milling machine. I'm finding some suitable pieces of mild steel to pack up the blocks in the machine vise, so that when I machine them, they will all be the same size. But these pieces of mild steel packings are too thin. I'll try a thicker bit. I really must treat myself to some parallels. These will be all in a box and easy to find. The big problem doing the job this way is the time it takes to find the right piece of metal to lift the block to where I need it to be. A word of caution, do not use painted lathe tools as shown here. The paint on the lathe tool makes it inaccurate. In any case, I need to work on the full-size blocks, not the one that are partially machined in the lathe. So here, at an incredibly high speed, that's because I've speeded up the video, it's not the milling machine that's going at this speed. Another word of caution, it's not a good idea to use a slot drill, because they're very vicious. Depending on the quality of the milling machine that you have, depends how quickly you can remove the metal from the brass block. This milling machine isn't particularly brilliant, as I always mention, but it works okay for me, and I do like to use it, because it's a very average machine. I'd just like to mention that I don't have to use a milling cutter. I could use this. It's called a face cutter. This would remove more metal and give me a better finish. But as I say many times, these are tutorial videos, and I really don't want to assume that all my viewers will have a face cutter. 
As you've seen, this three quarters of an inch diameter slot drill removes quite a lot of metal. Here I'm going to show what happens when things go wrong. By the way, the clip is just repeated. I didn't try and destroy the part four times. Why did this happen? I just took the cut in the wrong direction, longitudinally instead of transversely. It's very important to cut across the machine vise because longitudinally there's nothing to support the work at each end. I didn't do this on purpose. This was a genuine error. I wasn't watching what I was doing. And luckily the part is not destroyed altogether. And the good news is this is the final thickness I need it to be. I didn't reduce all of the blocks down to the finished thickness, but I reduced them all to the same thickness. And as previously shown, I am still using this very brutal slot drill. I think it's time to remove this and fit an end mill. The end mill that I'm fitting is also three quarters of an inch in diameter. So I can use the same R8 collet in the machine. Here's a comparison between a slot drill on the right hand side and in the centre an end mill. There are two differences between these cutters. Obviously the slot drill has two cutting flutes and the end mill has four, but the end mill is slightly blunt. It's at this stage where I really do not want to foul up. I will not get a second chance. So I find some new packings. Tap the first of the pre-machined blocks into the machine vise with a soft hammer. Without changing the position of the end mill, I remove the metal from every one of the blocks. Now I have four blocks that are all the same size. The next part of the job is to clean them up on some wet or dry sandpaper on a surface plate. This takes quite a while. I cannot tell a lie, I did cheat, I started them off on the belt sander because my lifespan is not long enough to polish these up on a piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper on a surface plate. After I finish cleaning them on the surface plate, I finish the job off by using a piece of Scotch-Brite, and as you can see, the parts do look quite good. I'll finish the blocks in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.